Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. Last episode we just moved up here. We wanted to get more eyes on the town. We have this benefit of it being a very bright evening tonight so we can see quite far in the darkness. Um, you'll see it's quite a, a radius. Now the zombies can also see farther in the darkness than they would normally be able to see in the dark. Um, in this particular night they're, they're seeing it a much larger radius. Mostly that's fine. Um, I like exploring during the day, so this benefit of additional view range is beneficial, and I quite like it. So I think we're going to continue exploring just to reveal more of this town. This town has been incredibly disappointing. Uh, the only things I've found here that I actually care about are the two gun shops that we've cleared. Everything else is very, not very good. What we're looking for at this stage of the game, we're looking for libraries, bookstores, uh, maybe a school would be just phenomenal if we could find a school. I wouldn't hate finding like a mall or one of the other interesting big locations. Um, we really need a pickaxe or jackhammer because we want to go and start looking into seeing if we could get into labs. In fact, since we're already over here, why don't we divert and see if we can get eyes on what this is. It may be a lab that we could um, turn our attentions to in the future. For now, though, there's nothing here that I care about. All we were going to do is push over to the pizza parlor and try to reveal some of this side of the town. Um, so we're going to do a lot of enemy clearing out in this episode. Uh, it's going to be a lot more of this kind of general gameplay rather than single targeted topics. So if you're looking for something in particular, it's probably not in this episode. It's probably just me clearing out big old hordes, uh, you know, over time. Again, this is a tedious aspect of Cataclysm. Uh, in order to travel really comfortably, you do kind of need to clear out zombies. Obviously, we could... Because it's dark, just try to slip past the majority of them. That's not really how I play at this point. I, I prefer to clear them out. Steel Spear is taking some damage. Um, this is going to happen naturally over time. We've killed, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens with this. How, how many kills are we up to? If you hit Shift uh, 0, the uh, right parentheses key, it will display a score uh, as well as your kill list. Now, scores is something that's not really super developed in Cataclysm. It's mostly just, hey, this is what you've done. Uh, it's not really a score per se. Still interesting to take a look at, at from time to time. We've taken a total of 281 damage. We've killed virtually one enemy per damage that we've taken, which is a great ratio to have. Obviously could be better, but it is what it is. Um, we've killed 285 creatures since the start of this game. I do think we'll engage this horde here. We'll probably end up pulling the Feral Runner just by the nature of the way the Feral Runner works. Um, they do track very well in the darkness. They seem to hear really well, and they tend to uh, get a whiff of you pretty easily. Really, I am surprised that you have not come to engage me yet. And uh, yeah, so I don't have anything particular to talk about, so we'll just end up quite a lot of them here. We do see a feral hunter, which we have not seen before. We have a zombie cop, which I don't believe we've seen before. Zombie cops can have some riot gear on them, which can be good, but their drop rates are not amazing, so it's not really something you can reliably look for. Everything else here we've talked about, let's talk about the feral hunter. Once human body is barely recognizable, scrambling about on all fours, its nails and teeth both sharpen into dangerous looking spikes. These guys, when they get close to you, will jump. So they will jump from like here all the way to you over here um, and then begin engaging you in combat and they will continue jumping around you if you try to retreat and that kind of thing. They, um, I believe, I don't know if this one does, the higher tier versions of this creature for sure deal cut damage. He may also deal cut damage. Cut damage will rip up your clothing um, and damage your clothing quite a lot. And then most things with significant cut damage will also have some kind of bleed effect attached to them. So I don't, again, I don't know if this particular creature does, but its upgraded versions absolutely for sure will deal bleed and cut damage. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Again, they will jump at us when they get close to us. So we'll see that when we, when we get over there. We're just going to continue clearing them out kind of one at a time. You hit my duffel bag, you little brat. Uh, and you're very hard to hit. And you're really hitting me more than half the enemies we've seen so far. So I'm getting a little annoyed. I still don't understand. We've talked about this before. I don't think children should have the hard to hit um, 
thing going on. I think it's just because they're small. I don't think they actually have a hard to hit flag. I think it's just their their monster size is small, which gives them like dodge bonuses or something. Um, but it's very annoying because again, I could definitely you hand me a steel spear and said I want you to impale my teen child. I would I would be able to impale your teen child very easily. Another zombie necromancer. There are too many zombies here to just shoot him. Let's continue clearing out the horde. Hopefully he doesn't resurrect anything uh, that we're killing or, or upgrading anything that we're killing. I'm surprised that we've seen two of them. I don't think in my previous Let's Plays, I don't think I've really seen one in a long time. So I'm surprised we're seeing them. Ah, you'll see he jumped quite a distance. And if we continue moving, he will eventually jump again. There you'll see he jumped several tiles and we get the printed message, the feral hunter leaps. What am I seeing up here? What is this? Oh, it's a zapper zombie. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to kite this guy the way we do other enemies. We're going to have to just stand and fight him. Because since he jumps, he would have been able to, to, to chase us very efficiently. Uh, lots of stuff on him, weirdly. Uh, he has full motorcycle armor. That's pretty cool. I would consider dumping the vest for motorcycle armor. Didn't we already have motorcycle armor? We didn't. It's 20 encumbrance though, but it does cover our arms and we have no arm protection right now. It's also very damaged. We'll take it, but I don't know about wearing it. Motorcycle helmet also, again, pretty good head protection, but we already have the army helmet, so it's not really worth it. Um, I think it can also be used for crafting other helmets, so something to keep in mind. Weird that you're wearing full motorcycle gear. Never know, I've never seen that before. Usually it's like patchwork. You know, you find one that has a little bit of something on it. You know, you don't usually see a full outfit like that. Maybe they changed the way item groups work. Or maybe just for specific creatures expanded the way item groups work. I know with, um, since they're not getting E done, I think they're doing a lot of little work like that. Since people know that they can't add content, they're adding some other things. We're taking a fair number of hits here. We really are just trying to keep away from that zombie necromancer while we clear out some of the zombie horde. Let's go to running. That other feral runner has heard or tracked me over here, so we'll go ahead and take care of him as well. Every zombie that we can kill and pulp now will be less trouble when we go to the necromancer. I'm not seeing anything upgraded, so I don't think this is the upgrader one. I think it's the one that resurrects zombies. And I'm pretty sure it can only resurrect unpulped corpses. So we don't have to worry as long as we are able to pulp them right away. It's another reason. That's the reason I don't want to be grabbed by you, woman. That's the other reason we're pulling these instead of just going over and trying to kill the necromancer. Um, is if we can pull them far away and kill them, he never really gets the chance. But if we get up on him, let's say, and we try to kill the necromancer, but then the feral runners come, so we start retreating and we kill the feral runners, well, he's just going to resurrect them, and then we're getting chased by all these runners, and it's a whole thing, so it's better to just try and piecemeal it. Not sure why he bursts towards me, but I don't like it. So we're going to back up, deal the kill the uh, cop zombie. Again, they can drop, um, I think they can drop handguns and shotguns, but more interestingly, they would drop... Um, Riot gear. Did you drop anything? A Beretta. So a 9 mil handgun um, with uh, fouling. We talked about fouling previously and we did not see the bar. Fouling on guns is a buildup of like residue in the barrel and in the gun. Um, I guess in the gun. I don't know. Specifically, you would think it would just be the barrel, but I actually don't know how guns work and where they vent gas and things. So I don't know where fouling occurs. But fouling will, um, I believe, lower the damage zero plus 26 equals 24 damage i'm guessing that's because of fouling where does it say fouling's caused uh accumulate slowly uh due to firing thought it doesn't say what the actual impact of fouling is eventually cause damage to the gun okay i mean whatever we're gonna take it but yeah, keep an eye out for fouling. 
Uh, and then you can clean fouling with, I believe, a pipe cleaner and some cleanser. So pipe cleaners are obviously very easily makeable. I think you can make them with a rag and a wire. Um, and then cleanser would be detergent or soap or whatever. Two-way radio has a disposable light battery in it. I don't really care about. And then no riot gear or anything. But he did have a handgun on him. So if you were a new player, you know, in the early game, uh, a handgun is pretty, pretty nice to have. Uh, let's leave this corpse and see if he resurrects it. I mean, he's, he probably doesn't even know it exists. Let's um, see if we can get this guy. He's tracking us now, so let's lead him away from the others. He's very slow. I didn't think you were so slow. Now you've spotted me. Now you've done it. Okay, let's back up. Hit him. Back up. Hit him. So again, very anticlimactic. We expected more trouble from him than he actually gave us. Man, there's so many zombies. Uh, yeah, you know, tedious part of Cataclysm. Sometimes you got to clear a little horde out. No big deal. Just uh, it is what it is. Come down here and deal with this one. I mean, you don't need to clear them out. Like I said, you can try to just slip in and out uh, of buildings and, and circumvent, you know, walk around as many of them as you can instead of engaging them. But I usually just uh, prefer killing them and moving on. That way we don't have to worry about something coming up behind us. A lot of fat zombies. Why is that? Maybe the pizza parlor. Usually when you see a horde of fat zombies, it's a joke. Um, like sometimes you'll find a basement that has uh, exercise equipment in it and you'll just find a bunch of fat zombies. It's like, ah, oh, it's, uh, it's a joke. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure. Might be something over here, a dojo or a gym or something that spawned them or it could just be coincidence. Pizza parlor is kind of where I would like to get to. I'm going to have to clear out some of these. The problem with the fat zombies and tough zombies is that they have more HP. So it can be a little harder to uh, manage them, especially if you're not very fast and we've been taking some hits so we are getting slower we're five percent slower due to pain than we normally are can cause some problems they both spotted us which could be an issue as well oh what else can i talk about um yeah so one step from eden i, I think is what that's called is a game that came out this week it's a roguelite kind of a mix of uh honestly it has some like rhythm game elements almost like you the the pattern recognition and moving around in a pattern really reminds me of crypt of the necro dancer but it's not rhythmic it's more or less like i mean i guess it is rhythmic but there's no like it's not tied to music or anything it's just uh maybe my brain is connecting it to the the kind of rhythm that you have to put forward it's very interesting if you haven't seen it it will be on my channel probably in the next week or so but if you haven't seen it and want to give it a Google, it, it's solid. I played one game, got my butt handed to me, and was mind flooded the whole time. But it's a great, interesting game, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. I was going to play that now instead of playing Cataclysm, but I, um, I'm running out of footage here. So I thought, well, no, you know, take care of business first. I know you're excited to play a new game and whatever, but like you know cataclysm's my bread and butter so to speak so it's like take care of what people expect to see on the channel and then branch out and do something else you know so yeah this week should be um small boxes why is there no pizza in those usually you find a lot of pizzas here it's possible they rotted heard footsteps ignore it's outside definitely bacon sardines definitely take the sausages it's weird to me that they don't have uh, pre-made pizzas like they usually do. It could be coincidence. It could be them changing the way um, pizzas, pizza parlors are set up. Cooking on a budget is a solid cooking book, so we'll take that. We've never really worked up our cooking skill. Not a single pre-made pizza, really. Very interesting. Very unusual. I'm wondering if they change that. The other benefit, depending on the layout of the pizza parlor, is that they will have arcade machines. We talked about this when we were gathering arcade mater um, electronics materials for our crafting. Uh, arcade machines are the best place, in my opinion, to find those. You can also disassemble, uh, deconstruct the um, terminals, the consoles here. They will also give a lot of electronics materials. And in the back, mostly is cleaning stuff which we don't really care about. Sometimes you can find a mascot uniform uh, if you're doing like a scavenger hunt game or something and you want uh, 
a uh, mascot uniform, they're a good place to go for that. Let's just leave that guy behind. Did we reveal more of the map? Not really. Pet supply store. We'll head over there because they can have a lot of canned meat foods. Um, so we'll head over there just to look. We can find a lot of cans of chicken and tuna and things in the uh, animal feed store. Looks like just a plastic bottle. Can we... It's open. Okay. Um, another feral hunter is the jumper. Yeah, so um, that too I should have mentioned. The feral runners turn into feral hunters. And then feral hunters turn into feral predators. And you can tell that they're interconnected because they all have feral in their name. They're also quite mobile, which is something that connects them. Just like um, when we talked about the boomers. There's the boomer and the huge boomer. Uh, and then some of them are more abstracted, like fat zombies will become boomers, but they can also become, um, what's the other fat zombie evolution? Uh, uh, my brain is blanking. I'm blanking on this, but basically they usually evolve along themed lines, which is uh, something to keep an eye out for. Anyway, let's check this shop and grab ourselves a bunch of canned goods. Dog food can be used to tame dogs in the game. I don't ever do that. Uh, I also don't eat it. You can eat it. It's essentially just meat, um, but I'm sure it's probably got a bad health uh, attached to it. But then again, we talked about how a lot of the items in the game that should have health ramifications don't. So for all I know, you're perfectly safe to eat dog food. Don't quote me on that. I don't actually know. Um, and we're seeing small and medium cans. The difference here is the quantity. You'll see the small can has one portion. The uh, medium can also really one portion. That doesn't seem right. Okay, that's weird. Uh, but anyway, we're not looking for that. We're looking for the canned chicken, which we just found. Um, we can cut up the dog harnesses, by the way, if we're looking for leather. The rubber dog suits will give neoprene, which is one of the only reliable places to find neoprene. I guess we'll grab that just for the neoprene. Um, and then we're just going to look around for chicken, tuna, and anything that's human edible. Again, you may very well be able to eat the animal food without any ramifications. But for roleplay reasons, I'm not going to make my guy eat dog food if I don't absolutely have to. Ooh, Kevlar harness. Also take that. Ooh, we're overweight now. Yeah, we're full up. We can throw on the pet pack for a little extra storage. We're not gonna, let's just head back and drop our stuff off. This bike looks like it's intact. We're gonna hop on the bike and ride our way home. Or apparently that occupies a tile. What is this? It's a sandbox. I plowed into a sandbox. It's fine, made a little bit of noise. Seems like the enemies are aware of me, which is not great. So let's just uh, get out of here. And we're gonna backtrack all the way that we came. This way, if the enemies follow us, they're not following us straight to our base. Plus, we know this is a relatively safe location. Let's zoom out here. There were some enemies down here because we had gone through the parking lot. So let's just be a little careful. Looks like there is another Zambi there. Just prefer not to smash into anything. And we're riding a bicycle, so riding actually drains our stamina. It's just that it's so mild when you're going slow that it's not really a big deal. Um, so you'll see we're regenning stamina as quickly as we're losing it. If we amp our speed up to 25 miles an hour, we'll start losing stamina a lot more quickly. But I generally don't drive that fast anyway because I'm bad at driving in Cataclysm. Don't hit the tree. Don't hit the tree. We'll head back to base, drop our stuff off. And then we'll go back up and we'll continue looting. Because like the, those cans of chicken, chicken in particular, uh, is a food that I will often eat out of cans because it's... Uh, 400 calories per portion, I believe, which is a significant number of calories. Uh, let's stop here. Uh, where is the tuna? How much is tuna? Where is uh, red sauce? No. Oh, we must have looted more than I thought we did. Tuna fish is 300 calories per portion. That's interesting. I didn't think cal uh, tuna had that many calories in it. But So let's drop all this stuff we picked up. Uh, we can't activate the maps in the dark, and I believe we've already used both of these types of maps, so it's not like it's going to give us anything anyway. Drop all this food we've picked up. Quite a lot of food. We picked up quite a lot of uh, clothing as well. 
Drop all this stuff we don't need. Drop the grenades. We don't need all the ammo. We were carrying 357 with us, but it's not really relevant. We found quite a few guns out there as well. And since we're here, let's repair our duffel bag so it doesn't get destroyed. And we'll also start a fire. Oh, I don't have, I can't use the welder now. Activate welder does it have enough charges to repair my spear i don't have scrap metal is there not a pile of scrap metal right here i guess not we'll go up to the fence and grab some of the remnants of scrap metal from when we were smashing up the fences scrap metal is usually good to have anyway uh we'll grab all this stuff because it's all just materials we could use for crafting later so just grab what we can we don't need hundreds of wires though so we'll just take a handful of wires Ignore. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like a cool roguelike roguelite I'm interested in. Hopefully that all pans out. I'm excited to play that on the channel. Uh, very excited to play that. I was going to play that today, but I was like, no, you know, take care of business first. We can play tomorrow or whatever. Uh, activate welder. Welder. Do I have enough charge? I do. 10 per use. Okay. Repair. It ran out of charges. Oh, I hate you so much. Okay. So it was 10 per attempt, not 10 per success. So unfortunately, cannot currently... We'll take the... I really don't want to carry the welder with me, though. Inventory. Is it in my inventory? It's not. It didn't pick it up, which is weird, because usually it picks things up when you use them. Give me the welding goggles. We'll take this out to our vehicle and recharge the batteries on our way back up there. And then uh, we'll get the sewing kit. That's not how you spell sew. Sewing kit. Activate the sewing kit. We want to repair our duffel bag so that it doesn't get close to being destroyed. Success. Success. Uh, can we reinforce? Not really. Uh, and then we will activate it again to fix our socks, which is weird. That they managed to damage my socks, but what are you going to do? Go ahead and drop the sewing kit. And we're good to head back out. I don't really feel like riding the bike again. Ah, uh, we might as well. It'll speed things up a little bit. Let's get out of here. So we'll head up here. Uh, bikes are fine. I don't... I used them a lot when I first started playing. Honestly, they're just so flimsy that, like... And, and when you bump into stuff, like you saw me bump into the uh, sandbox there, sometimes you can't tell what is going to be colliding and what isn't. I didn't realize that was a sandbox until we hit it. So it's like you risk, you run the risk of like crashing and I guess falling off the bike. I know if you are in an accident while in a car, you have a chance of being ejected essentially from the car. Or at the very least, you take damage. Um, and that's circumvented by wearing a seatbelt or a harness in the vehicle. So, like, if we look at this seat here, this has a, uh, if we look up here, this has a seatbelt, which will protect us in the event of a collision. A bicycle does not have that. So, in a bicycle, I imagine you're much more prone to take serious damage. How much, um, we have 100% battery charge, so let's flip on the charger. And then just chill out for a few turns here. Oh, we have the temperature prompt. We're actually cold, which is very surprising. Oh, on our arms, because we have nothing on our arms. That's okay. It's not to the point where we're going to get sick or have any real net ramifications. This should be char... You're not... Okay, it was so fast last time. Let's just hold this down for a minute or two. Two minutes. Let's check it again. Okay. We'll go five minute wait wait for five minutes okay and they should be fully charged and we'll turn off the recharger because i'm not sure if it drains while there's no batteries in it activate the welder no reload the welder nope reload the welder activate the welder repair our spear i don't have scrap metal because i'm dumb god look at scrap metal come here i need something scrappy uh this has scrap metal scrap metal We'll head back out and try this again. Weird that you can do this in the dark, but okay. Steel spear, repeat, and we fully repaired our spear. 
And we will drop the welder next to our crane. That way we'll be able to spot this very quickly and easily. Great. Um, don't know why I didn't drop the glow stick, but that's, that's fine. Just drop that here. I don't really need it anyway. And we'll head back up there and we'll uh, continue looting the pet store. I uh, forgot we brought a bike with us, but I've already proceeded up here, so I'm not going to go back for it. Uh, looks like, oh no, this is the motel, so we'll clear out the smattering of zombies that are here. Just so we have a little bit more freedom of movement. Don't run, walk. Wasn't there another one right here that was a female sprite? I guess we lost her. Here's the skeleton. Again, the skeleton is resistant to pierce damage. I believe. So we really would rather not fight the skeleton. There's a fox around as well. We could probably kill for some meat, but I don't like the idea of murdering a fox. Actually, when I was a kid, the red fox was my favorite animal. Um, but then I grew up, and now I don't have a favorite animal because adults generally don't. I like wolves, like, but so does everyone. Um, we'll clear... I don't really feel like clearing everybody. Let's just head north, see if we can get around. And we'll just fight this guy we got up here. This is another tub zombie. We'll fight them if we have to, but I'd rather just walk around them. He's got our trail, unfortunately. So he's gonna... Ah, it's really weird, because like he was down here, and he tracked us up over and then over, and now he seems to have lost our trail. That's peculiar. Okay, anyway, head into the here. We're going to continue looting for, for food. I think we already looked at this pile. Okay. Again, lots and lots of calories here. Canned chicken, 400 calories per. Uh, tuna we established was 300 calories per charge. And I often use meat products in crafting and, and when we're cooking back at base. So it never hurts to have a lot more of it. Looks like we're mostly done here. Cat food, dog food. Dog food. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Um, yeah, I'm interested in playing some more games. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to ease back into, t you know, YouTube. I don't want to devote the substantial amount of time that I was devoting to it. I never had time for myself. And I think that was a part of why I was struggling so much was that every waking moment was spent doing YouTube and like, I've just been taking a break, you know, been downloading some anime, you know, um, getting uh, looking through my collection of ebooks and stuff, and it's like getting back to writing some is really important to me, and yeah, it's been it's been nice to back off a little bit. I'm sure people are gonna start getting irritated because like there's not gonna be as much stuff on YouTube, but I'm trying not to think about that because I don't think that you all should have a say. <laughs> when it's so closely related to my mental health. Let's check for solar panels. None. I mean, let's check for sure. No, none. What is this? Water purifier? No, it's no good. No solar panels here. Looks like there may have been, but they were destroyed. Would be my guess as to what this glass is. Yeah, that'd be my guess. I don't know for sure though. But let's climb down. Yes. You try to keep your balance. Maybe I am doing that wrong and I risk taking damage every time I climb down. I'm not sure how that works. I still don't understand. Ooh, what are you? Military surplus is a great one. Doctor's office is a great one. Bus station kind of sucks. But uh, candy shop also not super relevant. Gas station. Uh, I would love to at least show you the gas station. That way we can... Uh, because we, we were talking about vehicles and not finding fuel. This is a nice little block here uh, because the military surplus can have a lot of stuff. We mostly already have found the military gear that we would be looking for. What we would be looking for is light amplification goggles, which would let us see really well in the dark. Um, and then we would just really be looking to expand our collection of MREs um, just for free infinite store, you know, shelf stable calories, basically. Um, Doctor's office, we're looking for medications. We're looking for um, a stethoscope specifically as well as a scalpel. Those things are valuable later in the game and usually you want to try to find them as soon as possible. 
Nothing else jumping out at me. Fast food is fine. Um, it looks like we can see about one block from where we are. So I would love to push over while we still have all this light. We're at 30 minutes. Man, this would be like the fourth episode in a row, though, where we didn't do anything but loot. And I feel like I should be backing off on that and trying to show you other things instead of just looting. What is this? Another candy shop. I don't know. Homeless shelter. I don't know what we'll do, but for now, we're going to wrap. My throat's bothering me a little bit, so I might call the day here. Yeah, let's stay here. I was going to head back to base. I think we'll stay here and save. That way, when I start the game next time, I will hopefully remember that, like, hey, we might want to push over here to continue revealing the town. At this point, we've seen a lot, and it's all just houses, really, and nothing of interest. Pretty disappointing. Was really hoping for some bookstores. We really need the higher tier books. <sighs> okay. We'll reassess tomorrow. For now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial content in the near future. I'll see you next time.